Greetings, Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalists. It's good to be with you this morning, and I'm really sad that I can't be there in person. But thanks for all the work that you do in the world, and thanks for listening to this message. Since I began to organize as a part of a movement to end poverty, people have said to me that our goals are too ambitious, that demands for human rights and human dignity are both politically inconceivable and impossibly expensive. They quote the Bible, arguing that since Jesus said, the poor will be with you always, it can't be God's will for everyone to share in the abundance of our world. But when I read the Bible, including and especially that statement by Jesus, what I see from Genesis through the New Testament is a constant revelation of God's will, that no one should be made hungry, sick, homeless, underpaid, indebted, or bereft by the violence of social injustice. I read an ongoing indictment of those who would take and keep the wealth of our world for themselves and cause others to suffer. I hear the biblical command to fill the hungry with good things from Luke 1, not simply as caring for the poor as an end result, but building a movement advocating for policies and structures that lift the load of poverty, admonishing nations to, as Jeremiah 22 says, Do no wrong to the immigrant, the homeless, the children, and do not shed innocent blood. Indeed, throughout sacred scripture, including the codes, policies, and laws contained within the Bible as well as in the prophets, gospels, and letters, there is a call to end exploitation, to attend to the poor, a mandate of Sabbath rest and jubilee years, a prohibition against charging interest on survival loans, profiting from pandemic or other crises. There are commandments to pay living wages promptly, to bring equity to legal proceedings, to give to everyone who asks of you, to welcome the immigrant neighbor, to care for the needs of the entire community, and to stop depriving the rights of the poor. Whether it's in the books of Moses, the prophetic critique, the parables or ministries told throughout the Bible, God's beautiful creation is lauded. God's intention for that abundance to be a blessing to all, not an elite few, is the central theme. In truth, the instruction and lessons in scripture is that society must be organized around the needs of the poor, the suffering, the marginalized, that when we lift from the bottom, everybody rises. All of this reminds me of a favorite quote from Reverend Dr. King, a quote that is in your programs this morning. In his Beyond Vietnam sermon at the Riverside Church, just blocks from where I stay, one year to the day of his assassination, the Reverend Dr. King preached, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It is not haphazard and superficial. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring. A true revolution of values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of poverty and wealth and say, this is not just. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. And although spoken 57 years ago, it really couldn't be more prescient. In this, the richest nation in the world, there are 135 million people who are poor or one fire, health care crisis, job loss, storm, away from deep poverty. Poverty is a leading cause of death, taking 800 lives a day when the policies and solutions to end poverty tomorrow are at hand. And we have a situation that my Poor People's Campaign co-chair, Bishop Barber, explains as people being treated as things, corporations being treated as people. If that's not about moving away from a people-driven society, I don't know what is. 
Over the past year, more than 21 million people have lost their Medicaid, adding to the 87 million who already had inadequate health care. 26 million people reported not having enough to eat in a nation where 72 billion pounds of food go to waste each year. Embolden racist plan and carry out attacks on democracy under a veil of white Christian nationalism, including passing 1,000 laws over the past four years that suppress votes and deny people the power to make the decisions that determine their lives. And our nation continues to invest in war and death, enabling violence and what the United Nations surmises as genocide in Palestine, causing chaos in nations and among peoples around the world. I know folks in this worship service are aware that there are more than 54 cents of every discretionary federal dollar goes to fund the U.S. military industrial complex funneling $21 trillion since 9-11 to border control, war, the militarization of our communities, not making any of us safer, but rather endangering the lives of generations to come. And at the same time, so little money goes into programs of social lift lift. For that 54 cents that goes to the military, less than 15 cents goes to education and health care, living wage jobs, and programs that lift from the bottom at all. But in truth, these are exactly the times when prophets remind us, rise up to remind us that God demands justice and that God judges those whose power and wealth rests on the dispossession of the rest of society. Jesus' ministry began in a time like ours, when the Roman Empire was strangling millions of poor people and calling it peace. Jesus began declaring drawing directly from the prophet Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. The prophets go on to proclaim liberty to the captives, a phrase that in turn comes from the Jubilee laws of Leviticus. And Isaiah reminds us that there should be no poor person among us if we follow the commandments that God is giving to us today. Jesus teaches that as long as we cancel debts, free those in bondage, pay workers a living wage, give to others without any expectation that will be paid back. When we care for each other in times of crisis, when we build a movement of those considered expendable, when we confront the powers and principalities, when those wounded by deep social and economic wounds heal through mutual solidarity and moral action, then will there be no poor among you will pay attention to the weightier matters of the law. We're also warned, however, that if we instead refuse to organize our society around the needs of the poor rather than the endless systemic greed of the powerful and rich and the warmongers, then poverty, then want, can never be banished. It must be said, no, God does not condone poverty, nor suggests it is inevitable. Jesus does not proclaim, I didn't make enough food for everyone to eat. Nowhere in our sacred text does it say, my abundance will trickle down from the rich to the rest. Jesus does not suggest that anyone should profit off of the suffering of others, nor that I want Peter to have to rob Paul to be able to pay one's bills. He does not say get a job to the homeless of our society or that you have no right to even exist to the poor and downtrodden. The Bible does not proclaim that a little charity is as good as you can all do. Nowhere do we find teachings that mob violence and threatening people is anything other than adherence to empire. And Jesus never once suggests charging lepers a copay. In the midst of all this suffering, this despair, the loss of life, let us remember that the God of the scriptures cries out, I am the one who led you out of Egypt. That God reminds us that how we treat the poor, how we treat the immigrant neighbor, is how we honor and worship God. We hear in the Gospel of Matthew, in fact, that justice, that righteousness, are the weightier matters of the law. They are what matter to people, to humanity, and what matters to God. So in this season, in each and every season, who are we to worship? 
what are we to honor and what will we do? I want to end with yet another powerful quote from Reverend Dr. King, so needed at a time with unbridled white supremacy and violence, when the earth is groaning, when there's war and genocide happening on our watch, and when millions are being pushed into poverty and million and misery. Let us take these words to heart. God has left enough and to spare in this world for all God's children to have the basic necessities of life. And God never intended for some of God's children to live in an ordinate superfluous wealth while others live in abject deadening poverty. And somehow I believe that God made it all. I believe firmly that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And since we didn't make these things by ourselves, we must share them with each other. And I think this is the only way we're going to solve the basic problems and the restructuring of our society, which I think is so desperately needed. We need you in the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for more revival. We need you on June 29th at 3rd and Pennsylvania Avenues for the Mass Poor People and Low Wage Workers Assembly and Moral March on Washington and to the polls. We need you to help wake the sleeping giant of poor and low income voters, transform the political landscape from the bottom up. We need you to stand around our 17 point agenda, affirm that everybody's got the right to live and to abolish poverty as the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. We need you to demand a living minimum wage of at least $15 an hour index for inflation. We need full and expanded voting rights, no more voter suppression, guaranteed workers' rights and labor rights, health care for all, affordable, adequate housing. We need strong social and safety net social welfare and safety net programs, an end to gun violence, profit and proliferation. We need to demand fully protected women's rights, environmental justice that secures clean air and water. We need you to demand justice for all indigenous nations, fully funded public education, just immigration laws, addressing militarism and the war economy. We need you to demand standing for peace, not war, calling for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza that allows for humanitarian relief, a release of all hostages, peace and justice to be pursued, and an end to genocide all around this world. And we need you to demand an end to hate, to division, and to all parts of an extremist political agenda. Because we say poverty no more. We need justice for the poor because everybody's got a right to live. We're building a moral movement led by the people. We're coming together, organizing together, uniting together. We're addressing the interlocking just injustices of systemic poverty and systemic racism, ecological devastation, the denial of health care and the war economy. We're rejecting the distorted moral narrative of religious nationalism. We're choosing life and truth and justice and peace. We're solving, as Dr. King said, those basic problems and restructuring our society around the people. Please join. We need you to move forward together and not one step back.